Hello everyone, this is my review for TNA Impact Wrestling on uh, October 15th, 2014, and you know, right right off the bat, I, um, uh, I'll go off and I'll go off and say you know this is the this is the first show after their Bound for Glory pay per view, which well in senses of their storylines and everything, Bound for Glory it, it meant nothing, but. Uh, you know, they did have some really good matches on, uh, on the Bound for Glory show, and if that's all you're looking for, you probably thoroughly enjoyed it. If you're looking for the uh, investment into the storylines, you didn't really get anything out of that show. But uh, on to Impact for, uh, the, for this week. Uh, you know, they started out the show with uh, Kurt Angle calling out Bobby Lashley, wondering why he wasn't accepting the, uh, cha the challenge for... Uh, from Bobby Roode for the World Heavyweight title, and without Lashley ever really saying anything, he they he just decided, uh, you know, Kurt Angle just decided, you know what, you, you will have to defend your title. You'll defend it uh, in X number uh, in X number of time, and he wasn't just going to give the title shot to anybody. He was going to make them earn it, and that this is a good this is a good sense of, uh, you know. This is a good way of going, I think, for uh, t uh, for TNA, at least in the aspect of building somebody to go after Bobby Lashley. Make them have a have a match to earn their World Heavyweight Title match. You're not just giving it giving it based on something uh, some other reason. So he makes the fa uh, a fatal four way uh, elimination match with Eric Young, Jeff Hardy, Austin Aries, and Bobby Roode. So there you go. You have a really good match made in, in there for the main event, and you know it gives it. It was given a good purpose. Winner gets a little shot at the World Heavyweight Title. Uh, I actually liked that segment and liked where they went with it. Um, ne uh, next up was the Madison Rain and Havoc match for the Knockouts Title, and honestly, this one did not. Uh, this one kind of fell flat. And not just because of the uh, size difference between Mass and Rain and Havoc in the in the here, but you had the triple threat match the week before, and with that triple threat match, Mass and Rain took the heel tactic to win the match. Now it's a heel versus heel situation, and you're not uh, in. If you've seen many heel versus heel type matches in the past, they really don't go over all that well. It's just like the face versus face situation, unless if it's just supposed to be a really competitive match and they, you know, end up tearing the house down in the terms of the match itself. Um, uh, but for the most part, the heel versus heel matches never end out working. And since, you know, it seems they're going on a route of turning Madison Rain heel in this case. For uh, for probably a potential future storyline, it just doesn't work out well in here for her to have this match with Havoc. Um, but you know, obviously they had her win the uh, number one contendership match. You would you would honestly and honestly that's the reason to have the match. But they shouldn't have turned her into a, a type of heel just yet. They should have done this somewhere afterwards, uh, down the line somewhere else. But she came into the match going heel, and it just doesn't really work out in the end. And, the ma and with the match itself, you know, it was basically what it was. It ha Havoc event, uh, just eventually gets over and wins the match. Um, Matt Hardy and Magnus. Uh, I actually kind of, I did kind of like this. Um, the, yes, the match was just kind of thrown together. But for those one-off type matches here, uh, and, you know, Magnus and Matt Hardy had a pretty good match in there, uh, and they had a good backstage segment to at least quickly try to set up some kind of tension between the between the two of them, and they did a really good job pulling it off. And then the match itself, I felt, came off really well on TV as well. So uh, it's good to see that they didn't just get rid of Matt Hardy after the whole tag team uh, series deal. Uh, hopefully, you know, this isn't the only other case where he's going to be around. And uh, we'll see. hopefully see him in the future here a little bit more. But obviously they're going to split up the Hardys between... You know, back into like a singles competition versus having them be in the um, them being teamed up together. Uh, so I've kind of lost uh, track of where uh, the matches were after that. Uh, but I know so. 
So I'll basically just go off to the main event there. I, I kind of lost track of what happened right after the Matt Hardy match. Um, oh yeah, never mind, I won't go to the main event. This is the uh, EC3 segment. I really like EC3. Uh, I like where they go with Ethan Carter III a lot. In the having um, Tyrus come, uh, you know, having Tyrus be his new bodyguard, or AKA Brutus Clay for people who had been, who had seen him before, which would be most people who probably do watch TNA. I feel like a lot of people watch TNA and actually do watch WWE as well. So uh, Ty Tyrus being his new bodyguard is a perfect fit for him because uh, even though EC3 has a physical build that looks, uh, it looks like he could take care of himself, having that big massive bodyguard for him uh, behind him is a good way of going. It allows him to be even more cocky and come off more, uh, more of a, you know, just a. Uh, I'm tr trying to come up with the proper term here. Just coming up with more of a, a terms of a douchebag type character. Uh, came off uh, in every way in the sense, and you know, being that rich or playing the rich kind of guy character in that sense works out great. And then, you know, the match with him and uh, with Tyrus and Shark Boy, it wasn't really much of anything though. You do have a comedy bit bit about how big Shark Boy had gotten and everything, and he had him backstage snacking on foods and whatnot. Uh, that was kind of a, just a little bit of a joke going uh, going on, I guess, for whatever uh, for whatever reason there. Uh, also, the other uh, the other match that now coming to my mind was the uh, Bromance and Angelina Love versus uh, the Menagerie with Crazy Steve, Nux, and uh, Rebel. Uh, that match was okay in its uh, as well, but it doesn't really uh, do much of anything. I I think the Menagerie ca uh, characters have kind of run their course at this time. And it's just not uh, working out all that well. So hopefully they'll end that here in the very near future and maybe get these people some different character types. Something that could be more, uh, you know, allow the fans to get behind them a little bit more. Uh, so we'll see where they actually go with that. Uh, this does bring off to the main event, which was, of course, the Fatal 4 elimination match. Uh, for, and the winner gets the world heavyweight title match, uh, world heavyweight title match at, at some point in the future. I th I thought this was a great main event. It was good. It was good hearing it right from the get go with them and the backstage segments leading up to it as well with Jeff Hardy and then Austin Aries and Bobby Roode talking and of course an Eric Young promo in there as well. I thought they did a really good job of setting up the importance of this match and. Uh, you know how much the world title means to each of the, uh, each of those characters at this point in time of their career. So I, uh, you know, they did a really good job there. And then the match itself, I felt was just really uh, a really really good match. And this is a case where um, it was all four faces, and you know this match just really worked because it was just designed around being competition. Between the between them all, and they were just going to have to put on a really good match, and that did, and of course, you know, with the importance of the world of their uh, getting a world title shot to each one of them already established, it made it even better. Uh, you know, the spot uh, the spot in there to get rid of uh, to have Jeff Hardy and Eric Young eliminated with both of them getting pinned at the same time, I thought was great. The timing and the pacing of the match was really was really good. I didn't see really much of a, any kind of downtime or dead time inside of the match. And then, of course, after the way the uh, the Bobby Lashley and Bobby uh, and Bobby Roode match delivered in the past, uh, they obviously went with Bobby Roode to get another title shot here. And I think that's a gr I think that's a great idea. You know, having the two of them have another match between each other there. Um, was probably the right choice considering everything out of out of all of them I would believe Bobby Roode a little bit more of being able to beat uh, Bobby Lashley than any of the other guys uh, more uh, more or less just because he does have the bigger build he does ha and his move set does still pander to where he has to lift him up to getting the uh, to getting the oh, sorry uh, to g getting his finisher done like where Austin Aries was more of a uh, it is more of 
you know, he's a smaller guy. It is hard to believe that he would be able to pick up somebody like Bobby Lashley. Same with Eric Young. Uh, Jeff Hardy would be a little bit different because his finisher is the swan time, and that becomes a little bit more believable there. But I feel like with the way building the storylines uh, story up and the characters up, it just comes off natural that uh, you would pick Bobby Roode to going into, the world uh, into a world title match here in the future. So overall, I felt Impact Wrestling was actually a fast improvement uh, this week. I, uh, you know, they did a good job of you know building up quick storylines, like with the Magnus and Matt Hardy match. Obviously, with the Fatal Four Way match as well, I felt it came off really good. The really only uh, there was really only two downsides. That was the Menagerie match and the Knockouts title match because I just don't feel the heel versus heel type. Care, um, heel versus heel matches just don't really work in my mind in, in any way. So uh, overall, I felt it was a really good show. Just a few some minor down points to the show. And uh, hopefully they can continue on this momentum with uh, next week's show and, and seeing where storylines bu uh, build up and how they're going to go into a future match with Lashley and, uh, and Rude. So that's my review this week for TNA Impact, and I thank you guys for watching.